You guys in the mood for some heavy payload? I am. It just seems like that kind of day, all right? This is a really cool shotgun, uh, one that many folks may not necessarily run into very often. So let's have some fun with this Browning BPS 10 gauge. All right, we're gonna be shooting some one and three quarter ounce slugs at 1,280 feet per second. All righty. Mr. Melone. Uh-uh. Oh, <laughs> woo, <laughs> yeah. All right, guys, welcome back. Eric here with Iraq Veteran 8888. All right, these shotguns are a lot of fun. It's a bottom eject, pump action, uh, 10 gauge. Browning, you know, still supports and makes the BPS. Um, this is an older unit. These are produced uh, by the Moroku factory in Japan. Very, very high quality units. Um, you know, I actually reached out to the folks at Nordic to see if maybe uh, they made a bigger tube for this bad boy so we could put maybe some more shots in it because it does use a uh, 24 inch long uh, vent rib uh, barrel. And I can't bring myself to SBS this one and cut it down. So I think what I'm gonna wind up doing is, is trying to, you know, come up with a, an extension uh, they don't make extensions for the 10 gauge shotguns. Uh, they do a plethora of different ones for 12 gauges. Uh, you guys might recall our video we did on our little Benelli Super Black Eagle that we nicknamed Goldie, okay? And that one does have a Nordic Components uh, extension on it. So I'll probably wind up getting with a local machinist here and manufacturing a, uh, you know, a tube for this thing that we can uh, get that round count up a little bit. Uh, this one holds three in one, I believe. Those were some 10 gauge rounds from Federal, some slugs. That's actually a very difficult load to get. We got some Federal Black Cloud. It says, any choke, always lethal, one and one five eighths ounce at 1375. So this is definitely a uh, hot load here. 10 gauge is a lot of payload. And like I said, this is an exercise in payload. Um, there's always gonna be sort of that song and dance of, you know, yeah, you can take a 12 gauge round, like say the Aguila mini shell that has very, very little recoil and uh, has less powder, generally a lighter payload, and you get less recoil and the gun can hold a lot more shells because it's a smaller shell you're trying to fit into the gun. Um, in the case of the 10 gauge, there are a lot of 12 gauge loads that can rival the power of 10 gauge when you get into some of the three and a half inch magnums like we um, showed off in the video with Goldie there. And that gun is a semi-auto. Uh, Benelli Super Black Eagle with a three and a half inch magnum chamber. Uh, these are also three and a half inch shells. Uh, most of your 10 gauges are, okay? And it's a lot of payload, so you can get more powder, uh, more shot into these, but the three and a half inch magnum 12 gauge loads do rival some 10 gauge loads, if not getting really close to that level of power. So it just depends on what you're looking for. Um, these 10 gauge BPSs can generally be had for pretty fair money. And that's mainly just because a lot of people, you know, are kind of going more so towards the towards the three and a half inch Magnum uh, 12 gauge shotgun. So I've got four in the tube and I think I can fit one more in the spout here. And let's just uh, see how this uh, black cloud ammo does against some of our steel here. I'm gonna go ahead and get one in the tube. Safety's on, we'll top her off. So that's four in there and one in the pipe. Let's see if I can get a, a fifth one in there. No, so it holds four plus one in its current configuration. And you know, because the barrel on this gun is so thick, right, um, it's very rigid. And this gun has a pretty good bit of heft, so it's not super, super light. And with a good recoil pad, it really doesn't kick quite as bad as you would think for a 10 gauge shotgun. Certainly not as brutal as shooting the uh, the h &R. Uh, that we cut down the little 10 gauge thumper. All right, bye bye, Mr. Plate. Good pattern, very good pattern. Now, uh, I'm sort of one of those guys that when it comes to 10 gauge shotguns or any of the three and a half inch Magnum, like 12 gauges, like that Benelli that I did the video on, I'm kind of a a big proponent for large payloads in a shotgun for defensive purposes uh, because there's just something about delivering a large payload especially something that's moving fast like a slug or buckshot uh, you can get defensive loads for a 10 gauge shotgun 
Uh, you guys may recall a 10 gauge video that we did some years back on the Ithaca Mag 10, and that's a semi-auto 10 gauge, but that uh, gun only holds, I believe, like three shots. So um, because of the design of that particular shotgun, it's, it's hard to get the capacity up in terms of putting a bigger tube on it. Uh, this, you get a repeater. Now it's not a semi, but in a pump with a longer tube, this would be a very viable home defense option, especially, and, and hear me out before you give me grief about it, especially if you live in a rural area or if you live somewhere, you don't have to worry about children in your abodement or something. It's just you and the dogs and the wife, so to speak and you just want to deliver the absolute uh, maximum amount of payload energy that you possibly can, um, this is a good option. You can get number four buckshot and uh, double alt buckshot in a 10 gauge. Now, unfortunately, I don't have any here to show. Now, these are slugs. These weigh 750 grains. So you're talking the same weight as a 50 uh, BMG projectile. Uh, so that's certainly a lot of energy. Now, granted, okay, it's not moving as fast as a 50 BMG, but imagine, I don't know, some environment where you're down range eight or 900 yards away and a 50 BMG goes through a wall or something. Maybe you're in a combat zone or something, whatever, right? Just imagine whatever situation. Well, after that 50 cal slug has traveled that far through the air, it's lost some energy. So it's almost, this is almost like down range 50 BMG power in a way. Now, granted, it's not gonna, I'm obviously not saying that it's as powerful as a 50 BMG, hear me out. I'm saying that it's a big effing hole, okay? And that's, that's saying something, all right? I've got a few uh, sodas right up there. I'm gonna go ahead and shoot those here with my 10 gauge slugs. Uh, these are actually pretty difficult slugs to locate. I've only got uh, one box here to show you today. I'll tell you what, we'll shoot a few more of these black, uh, black clouds here and I'll just shoot some of these steel targets and knock them over. But there's just something to be said about that just a visceral energy going down range. You know, this with a seven or eight shot repeater, uh, longer tube, very manageable. Now, some would probably argue, okay, yeah, this is a very difficult gun to maneuver inside of an abovement. Yeah, it is. It's long, it's cumbersome, it's heavy. Yeah, I get it. But let's just, let's just uh, say there's a baddie down the hallway and he turns a corner and here you are. <laughs> That's a, that's a lot of energy going down range. And for this being a cylinder bore choke uh, that is in this particular 10 gauge, actually group really good for a close range uh, type of thing. Now, this vent rib barrel that's on this gun is 26 inches long. It might even be a 28 actually, but it looks to be about a 26 inch barrel on this one. It's really more for shooting at, you know, ducks and uh, turkeys and things like that. So that's the overall sort of uh, intention of a gun like this is a uh, hunting hunting shotgun, but I'm a big proponent of, uh, you know, self-defense options being explored with shotguns because there's just, uh, you know, definitely such thing as payload. If you ever watch any police videos of, uh, of shootings uh, that occur when the police deploy a uh, shotgun into the situation, more times than not, how many police videos have you watched where a suspect uh, uh, or whoever, an assailant, winds up getting, you know, 30 rounds of 40 caliber Smith & Wesson launched at him and still doesn't stop. But how many police videos have you watched where one shot from a shotgun ends the threat immediately? So there's something to be said about payload and it's just like hunting, right? You can take the most powerful deer, deer rifles and shoot a deer in the wrong location and that deer is not gonna instantly be incapacitated. Self-defense is the same type of thing. Like, Shot placement is everything. And if you've got the one chance to put a round where you need to put it to end a threat, in my mind, why not launch something big and unruly? Why not throw a bowling ball? That's not, you know, not to say this is the only option. There are a plethora of different options for self-defense, but uh, I really do love big bore shotguns and I love three and a half inch magnums. and. You know, once I, I kind of got hooked on that Benelli Super Black Eagle, and uh, it doesn't cycle super fast. You can outrun the action real easy if you try to shoot it too fast, but it's a very manageable shotgun that's very easy to shoot. And if I want to go shoot some geese or ducks or a turkey or something, I can stick a turkey choke in it and go hunt with it. No big deal. 
it's a nonchalant kind of thing. And that's why I feel like these shotguns are kind of overlooked for that reason. People go, oh, it's a 10 gauge. I don't want to buy the ammo because it's too expensive. But honestly, 10 gauge ammo is available right now. You can get it and it's not too tremendously more expensive than some of the 12 gauge offerings. And you can actually walk in a lot of stores right now. You know, the, the buckshot and slugs, whether you go for 12 gauge or 10 gauge are still pretty hard to get in this environment, but they're not impossible to get. Your likelihood of walking into your local gun shop and finding 10 gauge uh, buckshot and slugs might even be, uh, you know, just as likely as finding 12 gauge at this point anyway. So why not uh, throw a bigger pill. All right, you high fructose corn syrup. Did I drop a slug out of the action? I sure did. I don't know why that round popped out of there. All right, all right, here we go. High fructose corn syrup. All right, bottom eject. Watch this empty come out. Look at that. And these Browning shotguns, uh, you guys might recall a video that Chad and I did some time back on his Browning BPS Tactical, uh, which is a 12 gauge Browning BPS with a full length tube on it. And the action on these shotguns, these uh, the Japanese Moroku factory shotguns, so ridiculously smooth. I mean, it's like it's riding on glass. It's just, these shotguns are highly underrated and I like them a lot. I don't know how many of the Browning BPS 12 gauge in the tactical model that they did, how many they made, but from every indication that I've seen, it's definitely less than like maybe 250 units. I don't think there's uh, that very many of them made, but what I'm gonna do is sort of kind of hodgepodge together my own tactical model, but in a 10 gauge, because you know, I always have to one up Chad on everything you know we can't be slinging those little small bore 12 gauge pills that that's not gonna that will not do okay we have to we have to go big or go home all right i'm gonna load one more tube up uh it is a 10 it does kick guys okay so i'm gonna give my shoulder a break but i will shoot a few more rounds so i think we had four in the tube and one in the chamber so five is a pretty uh respectable capacity for the shotgun considering its overall size this would make a great SBS. Uh, we did throw around the idea of maybe cutting the barrel back on this one and doing a little shorty out of it, but I don't know. I just feel like I'd rather have uh, some additional capacity and just leave the barrel like it is. Chad's over there whining at me because he wants to, it's, it, you know, now that, you know, it's like you get into an SBS here or there, you get into a shorter one it's, and it's like every shotgun you get, you go through this uh, sort of phase where you want every single one of them to be small. It's just like when you, um, you get your first suppressor and then you look at all the guns that you have and you're like, I want a suppressor for every rifle or pistol now. So it is addictive when you get uh, down that road. But anyway, I'm gonna shoot a few more rounds here. Uh, we're running out of stuff. I do have my watermelons sitting back there. He thinks he got away, but uh, watch this. All right, this is our one and five eighth ounce load. All right, we're gonna top it off. A lot of payload, boys and girls. All right, Mr. Watermelon, sorry. <laughs> Man, that's a really good pattern out of that bird shot there, especially for just being a, uh, you know, a non-cylinder bore uh, choke in this particular gun. Not bad at all. Uh, we are going to be doing some fun stuff with this shotgun. I just thought this would be a cool video. You know, it's always fun to throw some big bore pills down range, and uh, it's always fun to see things get destroyed with a shotgun. We hope you enjoyed today's video. We've got many more videos on the way. Don't go anywhere. Make sure you subscribe. Click that notification bell. A big thank you to all of our Patreon supporters, those of you who are purchasing man cans and things. It's a great monthly uh, subscription box we've got for sale. Tons of great gear that we choose. 
uh, that we use and we want to put in your hands. So uh, that's one way you can support the channel if you like what you see. Also, you can go over to Ballistic Inc, pick yourself up a snazzy t-shirt. We've got tons of great stuff. Not only t-shirts, we've got beanies and hats and all other kinds of nice merch, jackets, hoodies, which we're getting out of hoodie territory right now in terms of the weather. But uh, we've got some ton, really great stuff for sale. We're selling body armor now over there. We've got Oakley sunglasses, all kind of cool stuff. So go over to Ballistic Inc, pick yourself up a snazzy piece of gear, support the channel. Have a great day. Many more videos on the way. I might have to go to the chiropractor and get a little adjustment. We'll see you guys later.